On November 21st, 2021, the annual Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin was being held with a large number in attendance. At around 4.40 p.m. that evening, a red Ford Escape, an SUV, being driven by a man named Darrell E. Brooks, crashed through police barricades surrounding the parade going at 40 miles an oh, hour. Oh, I remember this. His goal was to yeah. hit as many people as possible. Right. I remember this. Law enforcement this. attempted to stop the vehicle by banging on the hood of the car, and at one point even firing their weapons at the vehicle. But it was Ah, looks like there was a warning. Warning for everybody. I don't know if YouTube will like this, but we'll see. Anyway, but yeah, I remember this. This guy was a sovereign citizen. What did he think this was legal to do? It was to no avail. Oh no, the, the driver, drummer. Darrell Brooks, who witnesses claim seemed calm and collected, drove through the crowd of parade goers, zigzagging to try to run over as many people as possible. Okay, it didn't show. Darrell then fled on the foot, direct. making his way around Wakesha and it being didn't show picked the up on various violence. security cameras. He made oh. his way to a residential neighborhood where he knocked on a that random door, did. claiming to be homeless and asking for a phone to call an Uber. The resident, who didn't know what happened at the parade, tried to be nice and let Darrell into his home even giving him a sandwich and a jacket. It was then that police arrived. He was then arrested less than an hour after the attack, which was picked up on a ring doorbell camera. Mills are everywhere now. That's him. He's running away. The cops are already around. Acting like he didn't, wasn't doing it. They have it. You got something with your name on it, man? No. Did they know he was the one? Okay, well, Had him identified on okay. him? Okay. Did you know this guy? Absolutely not. Oh. Okay. When all was uh -huh. said and done, 62 people were injured from the attack, 18 of those being children, and 8 people were killed. Four of the dead were grandmothers, and one of them was an 8 year old boy. I'm just going home. She can keep the money or whatever. I didn't even try to contact her further. I just was like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm calling yeah. you over and I'm going home. That's it. Let me ask you this, Darrell. So you weren't out, you weren't out in Waukesha Saturday, just Sunday. Yes, sir. Right? He's no, dying. He was part of it. Nothing physical yesterday. Um, like I told you, you're a part in the investigation. There's a lot of parts, right? To any investigation, there's investigation. We talk. Right. Well, this domestic abuse thing I'm telling you about, okay. right? On the day that Durrell committed the SUV attack on the Waukesha Christmas Parade, he had been involved in a domestic disturbance at his girlfriend's house. Oh. After this domestic dispute, which was reported to police, he fled in his red SUV and committed the attacks. Upon arrest and subsequent questioning, the investigators wisely chose not to mention the parade attacks, allowing Durrell Brooks to believe that he was only being brought in regarding the domestic dispute. Even though it's likely Brooks knew the real reason he was in the interrogation room, Focusing first on the domestic dispute would add context and a glimpse into the mindset of Durrell during the events that would follow. It's interesting. Okay, that's interesting tactic from the police. It's like they're going to talk to him about something that they're hoping at him hit up some part for, for him. He's going to be like, I didn't run those people over. And they'd be like, uh, we didn't say you did. Why did you say that? You know, and get him in some kind of trap. Okay, so wait. Hold on. Let me, oh, okay. let me go. I'm sorry. I you, talked about, question, but... you talked about being a you know a religious man, right? I can do better, God. I can definitely all do could. better. We all could. I'm not. We all could. No, that's, why, that's why. That's why. Yesterday was a mistake. I should have just freaking watched the game and just yeah. fucking went home, right? Because I, and that's the thing. What is? What do they teach us in Christianity? Throughout that, they teach us that we're broken, right? We're sinners, even when we're born. We're born sinners. We're broken. Is this stuff you can talk That's about? What explain the FBI. The religious beliefs and, and stuff? That, right? That's stuff you can talk about? They're not here today. On the record? So if it's that big a deal, you don't see them here today. Come on, Carter. Hey, we've been, we've been. What? You guys met in the car. We've been cool, yeah, man, the whole time. If I did something, yeah. if I did something yeah, wrong, that's why they were here. But do you see them here today? They're not here today. Yeah, but who? But you who? don't lie to me, man. Who? Who are they talking about? You seem like they just come for no reason. Well, here's the thing, Darrell. And I'm like, what? Hey, if police? I, if it's, Listen, it's, it's, for a minute. 
apologize. I can give you a clean slate. I apologize. Because you have lied to us as well. Because you came out here in the red Ford escape. Okay, that is what you came out here. <laughs> the same one. All right. So what I want to do is try to give us all a chance to reset. You understand what I'm saying? Start over. Caught him in the car. You're with not the car. Us accurate story. You didn't ride out with Marcus in a tan car. You said your mom doesn't have a car. I've just told you we've disproven that. Okay, I'm I'm interested to hear him just pause and just say. Again, I'm I'm very I I've been interested so far in learning about this stuff where, um if they get caught or can't go on a script or something, what, what do they do? So like they've proven this guy lied. He was in the car that was part of this attack. What's he going to do now? Just fess right. up. I don't know what kind he doesn't of woman know. she is. I don't know what y'all been through. His girlfriend's ever stopped in the car, driving kind of, driving kind of acting a fool. Okay. He and basically understand. the same area that you've already been able to describe for me. I'm just trying to figure out how and why it happened. What made you tear out of there? What made you so mad where you're like, fuck it, and you raced on out of there? And then people call, man, this guy, is, he's driving around here kind of fast. Was that why he did it? He was just pissed? He was just pissed and was like, I'm just pissed at my girlfriend, so I'm going to go and hit these people. And then I'm, I'm wondering what this has to do with sovereign citizenship or whatever. All I want to know. Like I said. Oh, he's not answering. He's off. He doesn't know what to say. Y'all been cool with me. What? He doesn't know what to say. It was discovered that he oh. was fleeing from a domestic disturbance. He was ultimately charged with five counts of first degree intentional homicide. His trial, mainly his behavior at his trial, which we will now view some clips from and analyze, was bizarre. Yeah, to say the what least. Happened. I never heard what happened to start to this off. Darrell Brooks decided to represent himself. If you this never goes well when I've heard about this. <laughs> you can see a reason why uh, fairly early in a legal system um, they put in, you know, first off, like fifth, like 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 plead the fifth, right? Um, um, you don't want to incriminate yourself, right? To remain silent. But then, yeah, also like in the Bill of Rights, putting it right away that, you know, <clears throat> and with the Miranda rights um, that you, you know, have the, have the ability to defend yourself, but like, and you have the ability to have, uh, you know, representation, you know, whether you can pay for it or not, because it's usually not a good s decision. It seems like to, to uh, defend yourself, especially if it's like a, you know, murderous guy's been charged with, was it five counts? You've seen Matt Orchard's video about people who What's represent this? themselves in court. Well, you probably have a slight idea as to how this goes. As and I would quick... feel like uh, if you were, if you were the prosecutor, you would just have a field day with somebody unless they were like a lawyer themselves that you're trying to prosecute. But yeah. Let's progress. We'll see how this ties into the main theme of this video, which I hope you haven't forgotten. To start yeah, off, here's a clip of Durrell attempting to use photographs that the state did not know about as part of his defense against a that. witness who was his ex-girlfriend. Nope, you have, to, you have to submit that stuff to the court beforehand. Um, you can't just show up with evidence. The, the, um, the other team, both sides, have, a, have a, um, a right to be able to review any evidence. Who he was charged with admissible. domestic violence against in order to try and discredit that witness, i.e., his ex-girlfriend, who he was charged with domestic violence against. ...that letter. So the state has the ability to question you about that, or question oh, this witness, okay. and to look at the veracity of what your claims are here. So, mm. when we... I may take an early lunch, and if that's in your cell, then you can go get it and can bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Wait, is he questioning the girlfriend? Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. How okay. many times I got to say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking He's notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if, I, but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. 
everybody seems to hear in that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, yes, we can hear it very and clearly. Everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or Once again, you're doing this tactic. Because try to it, it's not a tactic, it's what facts. we're talking it's about facts. to some this other reason. Facts. Because I, I find it hard to believe that um, I'm gonna all let of the a state, sudden nobody hears what I say. He's I'm so going to let the state make Stop. a record of why they Stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's... I didn't get these pictures from... They, nobody else... Why was somebody The record will else, reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from... No, that you believe. Doesn't matter. That I know. All right. Doesn't matter. Causation. And that's further more to that. I'm not because that's a lie. You can't do that. Let him finish. This is where you're gonna hold him in contempt. This is this is always hard. I know people want to defend themselves, and I, I would think if you're a sovereign citizen, you probably don't even trust defense lawyers, anyways. And so it's probably a mix of they're gonna waive that right to have an attorney, but and but they probably don't. They wouldn't trust any attorney that the attorney is part of the system, right? Um, so they want to defend themselves, but I don't think that's going to go very well. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate on on the record. Since you think you know so much, once so again, we can Mr. open Bruce the door on. We can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask that question he is to him. Over the top, animated right now. Do you know that? that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, this is I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, that's I not, warned him. That's, see, that's not, that's not your, this guy, I don't know if he's ever been to the court. It's not for you to determine um, factual statements, at least not to interject there. You're going to have to um, wait for your turn and wait for your turn. Yeah. Repeatedly, he's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. Hold on. This is this is the stuff again. I'm interested in and learning more about is what are things applicable to this in in history. So we got a precedent from um, uh, 1970. A defendant can lose his right to be present at a trial if, following the judge's warning that he will be removed, <coughs> disruptive behavior continues. He nevertheless insists on conducting himself in such a disruptive manner that his trial cannot proceed if he remains in the courtroom. I mean, that's open to interpretation, but there is precedent. We're just okay. going to take an early lunch. One hour, we'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter, Don't and he can show it is inadmissible, she will up. not be questioned. <laughs> and under 90611, I will you declare the cross-examination closed. You don't know where, Thank you, we're in recess. One hour. Bread? So this is the kind of thing we will see quite a you bit in bruh. regards to how Durrell conducts himself in the, court? in the courtroom. Here's a clip of Durrell attempting to do a cross-examination of a witness. Oh, what would yes, I do, and I object to being called that name for the record. Um, I, I'm interested to see if they use terms like objection and all this stuff, like the actual lingo you have to use, or or what, like. Oh, this should be this should be actually entertaining. Do you recall giving a statement to an uh, officer Probst? I don't know his name, but. Uh, Who's this guy? Who is this guy? Question. Talk to an officer. That's just a witness of the scene. And you, you did. No, this is not like a, a was. Is this not a, a just open and shut case? Like they have the footage. It's actually went this far. I'd never heard of this. this talked to an there. officer that that night. I talked to an officer on the phone. I did not talk to an officer that night. I mean, on the phone, I did, but not in person. Okay. <clears throat> What's the point? He doesn't know. So it was uh, a conversation on the non-emergency uh, line. Would that be fair to say? It was on the non-emergency line. Line. I actually uh, confirmed it after I called to make sure I was on the non-emergency line. He was didn't use nine one one. Is that what he's saying? What's the relevance? Or is it just showing? Do you the description that you gave at that time? Was it nice? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, who's you, or mixed. Who's you? Well, you have to let him answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. In all fairness, Darrell is actually not doing a terrible job in this particular exchange. He's attempting to discredit this eyewitness account of the individual he saw in his backyard after the parade attack. Not a bad strategy given the circumstances. Where he falters, however, is the way he comes across while he's doing it. Well, would you, wouldn't you have to say that uh, 
they weren't there, like at the scene or something like that? What would you use to discredit this person as a witness? So it'd be fair to say you didn't know at the time. I was giving a general description. So it'd be fair to say that you weren't sure. I was positive about that. that. That's pretty accurate. I mean, what you can. Do. I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. Oh. Oh. And oh how man. Did you come to that conclusion, the the you conclusion. I recognize you. I'm looking at you. How did you come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you? What can because you, you restate the question? You're saying you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would no. that be fair to say? I had no idea who you oh, were. This, wait, was this the guy at the house? Was this the house? That he knocked on the door? Obviously, he's going to have a, the best possible look at him. And so how can you say who, the, how can you say you then if you had no idea? You did have an idea. I'm looking at you. You are the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? You look like him. Uh, where you and I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. We just got to say so I recognized him. Is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Interesting. That there work, are just bro. so many bizarre moments caught <laughs> oh, on camera man. for this trial. Here's one that you might find interesting. Still waiting for Maybe the sovereign we'll citizen. Parallel connection. thinking between Durrell and our friend Adams from earlier. Thing worth noting is the testimony of Detective Casey that this video was obtained from the defendant's own Facebook account as well. The court is well aware there's media. nothing that, hold on, look. sir, stop interrupting. We have to make a record of it. You've yeah, interrupted multiple times. I've been abundantly patient with clear. you. Again, another interruption. So you need to be quiet and let the state make a record. Stop gesturing at me. me to be Stop rolling your eyes at me. You Stop I'm mumbling. I'm looking right at you. I'm not rolling my eyes. No, you I'm have looking. throughout. I've seen I'm it looking. and I've made note I'm of it. I'm looking at you. Okay, so are you asking me to be quiet or are you telling me to be quiet? Are you asking me to be quiet or are you Does telling me to be quiet? Hmm. Defensive. Arrogant. Overly concerned with semantics and yeah. unwilling to cooperate with governing rules and regulations, even in the court of law? Hmm. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Thank you, Your Honor. And just pass. to indicate, Your Honor, this court has been abundantly patient with Mr. Brooks. He challenges the court's authority repeatedly. This court absolutely has the ability to tell him to sit down and be quiet. And you haven't done that. And I know why you haven't done that, Your Honor. Pissed. And we appreciate that. He is not in control of this courtroom. You are. And he needs to respect that. I wonder if, um, if, he, at, if he actually been making those outbursts, if he had an attorney president, present, um, that they would have held him in contempt. I wonder if that's a big reason why they're not. Maybe because it's such a high profile case as well. This video was relevant based on his questioning of Detective Casey, as you just indicated, challenging his ability to identify the person who had their back turned to the camera in the still shot of State's Exhibit 175. Here's another one. Your Honor, with all, with all due respect, did the state have to put their witnesses in order and tell me? It's irrelevant what the state did. Did, did they have are. to do that? No. They didn't need your assistance to do that. Did they have to do it? No, they didn't. I don't have, have to, to be do provided it. with. Did, we're going to call this witness at this time. But they're this able witness at this to time. contact their they witnesses. They didn't have to do that, so why should I have to do that? And accommodate their schedules. This is not about you. It's not about the state. It's about the witnesses. It's about what's fair. It's about what's fair. No, frankly, sir, it's about you trying to control what's happening in this court. How? How? How am I controlling what's happening? I'm the one shackled to the table with so a uh, here's the with a shock it device on my uh, ankles. So how's I'm trying to control anything? I'm happy. I just want this I'm to be fair. To it hasn't been fair. Mr. Brooks, it's fair. No, it's not. If you I have to do something that they don't have to do, how's that fair? Hmm. Dictating what he believes is fair and putting that personal belief of what is fair and just above what is written in the law.
Hmm. I mean, you could always say, I mean, you could always say like, maybe it, okay, it may say in the law, but does that mean it's fair, right? And what was he saying? Something about he didn't know who the witnesses were going to be? So he feels unprepared? Is that his deal? It's fair Explain to me how it's fair. The process that it has been set up to frankly help you no this it's not helping me by it's helping court. it's helping the state and, no, by being able to say if we know the time and we know the person not, and I we know this you, then we can be prepared so we'll already be ready Mr. Brooks, that was the whole aim of that and i would have had her come in later you didn't want to answer that question there was no and question I, to, it was no question to answer uh, i did i true. did what you asked me to do your honor you no, said you yes you did you okay. did you asked me to give them my witness Mr. list. Brooks, I gave them my witness list. Yesterday, it's not, it's not my fault. Very it's not my fault. They weren't going to be prepared to Mr. do Brooks, their. Here's the deal. The jury's cross. coming out, and I'm I'm going to stand my ground on this. I'm going to okay, stand my ground is, too, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be disrespectful her, or disruptive. If you I'm just stating I want it to be fair. When the jury comes back out, I'm releasing her from the subpoena. You can't do that. Law, where's the lawful law? Where's the lawful law? I have the right to you have to cooperate law. with this process. But I also have the, right, the six member well, right. We have a witness available for you to call. I can require it's you to It's not the witness that right should have been called at this time, Your Honor. Hmm. Citing laws and amendments without the proper knowledge of how they actually work and trying to warp court procedure to fit his own narrative? Hmm. It is based on the list that you provided and-, and That didn't have order. a time, that didn't have a time or-, or There are also order. quite a few clips like this one. Do you see- well, Like, okay, he actually you know, was citing things, right? Sixth Amendment, so Sixth Amendment. So many of those, those laws in the, about in the middle or so of the uh, Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments are- have a lot to do with like court proceedings and and you know when you're accused of a crime so like with this <coughs> we get like right to a speedy trial um is that what he's saying though like when he's talking about the sixth amendment that it's it's not providing him that right any of the individuals you were just testifying there were also quite a few clips and, and that didn't have a time that didn't have a time or if there were also quite a few clips like this one do you see any of you guys that are, are big into law and i'm sure you, you get some of that too i know man i know about like the history of like the context of laws being created but some of you that are deeper in like in law does he have a case to be made about what's happening with these witnesses right now um and the way that that was handled uh let me know the individuals you were just testifying about enter the screen sir objection spankly to overruled he may answer objection leading Overruled, he may answer. In the video at this point, sir. Objection, speculation. Overruled, he may answer. Objection. Overruled. Do you know Mitchell's approximate age? Objection, speculative. Overruled. <laughs> this video goes on to show the red SUV drive through the extreme dance team, correct? Objection, leading. Um, it's foundational. Here. Overruled, it's foundational. It's previously been received. Go ahead. He doesn't know. He's just going to use it every time, hoping that it, it works. Like just use every time hoping that it works. Can you like run out of objections? Yes, so we went through. <laughs> Objection leading. Overrule the answer. Please tell us. Objection leading. Overrule. What hospital, is that correct? Objection leading. Overruled, it's foundational, the witness may answer. Is hospital being struck by the SUV? Objection leading. <clears throat> he doesn't know. Sustain this to the form of the question. Hey! <laughs> Please rephrase. At 55, sir. Objection leading. Overrule. Describe for the jury like what you just saw in the video, here. sir. Objection leading. Overrule. You say hitting Lola Hospital. What did you see? Objection leading. <laughs> Overruled. Did Miss Hospital report any injuries to the Waukesha Police Department? Objection leading. Overruled. No. The witness may answer. That's a good question. His success rate here for objections is laughably low. This can be due to the fact that he doesn't actually have the legal knowledge to know when an objection applies. The two objections he uses the most are leading and speculative. A leading objection is used when the question being asked suggests an answer in the question itself. An example yeah, would be sure. if you asked, didn't the defendant appear to be going too fast down the road? This could pigeonhole the witness. You'd have to, you'd, you, because with that, you'd be admitting that you're going too fast. Yeah. This into giving the answer that assigns an opinion to the situation right. rather than the actual facts. The correct way to ask this question in court would be, "How fast do you estimate the defendant was going?" 
followed by further questions to support the idea that they were going too fast, such as, what was the speed limit in that area? What was the visibility like at that time? Yeah. How Makes far sense. could you see? The second objection that Durrell uses is speculative. This one is a little more gray as far as how it plays out in court. Mm. But as the name of the objection suggests, speculative is asking the witness to speculate or give an answer about something they couldn't really know the answer to, or mm. give an opinion about how certain events played out when they weren't there to witness those events. For example, makes sense. That's that's a. I mean, that's a good thing to have. Example: A witness may be as, as as grounds for an objection. Asked, was Kelly with you on Saturday night? To which they would reply, no. If they then ask, well, where do you think they were if they weren't with you? That would be speculation. Yeah. Durrell so. misuses both of these, in part because <laughs> he simply doesn't understand how they work, but also because he is using the spaghetti method, simply throwing as many objections out as fast as he can <laughs> and hoping something sticks. Yeah. At worst, the objection is immediately overruled and he has disrupted the flow of questioning. At best, the objection is sustained He's swinging and he at every got pitch. one right. Oh, and there's also this clip. Oh. The length is 2 minutes 33 seconds. We're going to play it in its entirety, but without volume, Your Honor. All right, thank you. And uh, I, I object to that. And I would like to make an offer of proof for my appeal. We'll do that outside the presence of the jury, but I will allow the state to play it in its entirety without audio. Your Honor, I have all the exhibits they were provided. Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up along with the other two issues I still need to but address. How, but how can you play something that's not that I didn't? Mr. Have? Brooks, I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Is, is he right on that, though? Is he right? This actually leads back to the, the one I was asking earlier about the witnesses. Mind are noted. This is it's mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Actually, Your Honor, I changed my mind. I would like to play the audio, please. This is mind-boggling. Um, I want to have it played first without, and then I'll make a ruling and I'll take that up. Um, okay, I understand. Thank you. So we will play the entire video, Your Honor, two minutes, 33 seconds. I objection to that. Why, why does the whole video need to be played? I mean, what is he's, this? He's setting the foundation. It's relevant. Oh, did he make like a rap video? With the with the vehicle that he owns the vehicle. He questioned the officer about it. He questioned I question the detective about, about I question his knowledge. About the steel frame from the video. Yes. This is a rap video he made that he posted on his social media being played in court in order to get a view of the vehicle that he used during the parade attack. <laughs> Funny how... <laughs> it's being used as, as evidence against him for his video. Things Music become video. relevant under the right context. The video wasn't even in, in the exhibits that I received. That it would be the same thing. I take that. I take that as disrespect because they were allowed to say something that I said under my breath that was disrespect. Well, I they would direct both parties thing. to avoid commentary. Okay, well, can you do that, please? And and admonish yes, them because I'm will. always Absolutely. the one getting admonished. Everyone, I take that as disrespect too. Sir, I'm good. can I do my job? States directed to avoid laughing commentary. I didn't see it, so I can't further comment. I was looking at all these the cameras witness. in here. Don't nobody. However. I'm advising both parties to show Come decorum on, this is not fair. and restraint. Okay, so that clip was really just for fun. There are quite literally dozens and <laughs> dozens of clips that could be played from this trial, oh no. but this section of the video is already is. getting a little circuitous, so I'll just play one more that might help tie all the pieces of this bizarre display together. Was he, was he really trying to say he didn't own that vehicle, that vehicle wasn't his? A clip from the very beginning before all the real antics of this case ever really began. And the motion to withdraw, I do wanna start out with you, Mr. Brooks, and ask you, is it your desire to represent yourself in this case? Also, oh, this is the pretrial hearing. Uh, it is, uh, I would like to proceed in this matter uh, for a persona, not pro se. He learned As some with words. many of the terms and references that will be used by Durrell during the course of his trial, he also doesn't seem to understand the meaning of pro per and pro se, saying he wants to proceed pro per, oh. not pro se. 
Proper literally means in their own person and is used to indicate yeah. someone representing themselves without the aid of a lawyer. The okay. more common yet equivalent phrase associated with representing oneself is pro se, which literally means for oneself or on one's own behalf. Essentially, these both mean the same thing, okay. and both terms are equal to each other in definition in terms of how they are viewed by the court. That's fine. Say that last part again. I would like to proceed in this matter in pro per, not pro se. They're the same thing. So you're going to have to tell me what you think that means. Um, it is me exercising my right to defend myself, to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. Oh, okay. He, so he did actually bring it up, the sovereign citizen thing. This is like the last thing that he looked up that might be able to save himself. Like the last ditch so effort. Essentially, this matter today would be me appearing by special appearance. You have an absolute right to have an attorney represent you. It is protected not only by the Wisconsin Constitution, but the United States Constitution. Do you understand that? Um, needs to know his rights. I do understand my rights under the United States Constitution, yes. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Uh, repeat it. Do you understand that you have the right to have an attorney represent you? What make we sure call the right to he... counsel. Under the Sixth Amendment, correct? Under the Sixth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and the Wisconsin Constitution as well. It's a well-established right that a criminal defendant has. Do you understand that? I'm aware, yes. Do you wish to represent yourself in this case? Yes, I do. Okay. Before, pro I'm sorry, go ahead. I would like to represent myself pro per. What does that mean to you, sir? What's Explain the difference? to me again, that request. Again, because I've already said it on record, to represent myself as a sovereign citizen. He classifies himself as a sovereign citizen. And all of a sudden, the mindset with which he entered his trial and the way in which he conducted himself begins to make a little more sense. And although his reasoning for committing these... I feel like, I feel like though, from what I... Again, I'm, I'm so limited on what sovereign citizen means, but I feel like <clears throat> when I look at like what those first, like those traffic violations and stuff and those guys were really acting like like sovereign citizens. But like nothing I heard, and I, I'm gonna have to learn more that he was saying in the courts and kept getting shut down for is like sovereign citizen behavior, is it? Because wouldn't they just be talking about how they feel our laws don't apply to them? It didn't seem like he was really doing that. Multiple homicides probably has nothing to do with his identification as a sovereign citizen and more to do with anger and frustration from the domestic abuse charges he was going to face as a result of fleeing his girlfriend's house that fateful day in November 2021. His self-identification as a sovereign citizen gagged. did certainly provide him a wonderful mental shield that prevented him from taking any accountability of his actions regarding the attack or regarding his actions in the courtroom. Did he identify as a sovereign citizen before all this? The idea that he has a deeper knowledge of the law than the other attorneys, even the judge at times. The yeah. idea that he is the one who should determine what is just and what is fair. The misusing and misquoting of laws and amendments. The disregard <laughs> and non-compliance with courtroom procedure. Oh, no. The obsession with semantics and overly defensive nature. All hallmarks of a sovereign citizen. You hit the bingo All card. All part of the mindset which leads to moments like this. Like, I don't even want to be in here that much longer. Just do what you got to do so I can get up out of here. I'm tired of being in the courtroom that has no integrity whatsoever. How can you even call yourself Mr. a judge? Brooks, I need to make a record of some I need things. to make a record, too. You don't when am to... I going to get the chance to do that? All right. I need to make a record. He's being removed to the other courtroom. He is yelling at me. He's not going to let me make a statement. 
or make the record that I need to make. I'm finna, I'm finna he hasn't sat anyway, down so do for you the better part of two hours. All you, want. you can hold me in contempt all you want. I'm not holding you, you in contempt. Is it's criminal or civil, so I can hit right. you with you. I need to clear the courtroom because I do need I'm to make. I'm you what you know is coming. I need him to go to the if other courtroom because I do need to put some things on the civil, record. The record should Where's reflect the contract between you that and I? Mr. Brooks is criminal, yelling at me. What is the crime? He's, he is, Who makes the claim? And what is, is I will make the record when we get back. I will step off. But, Mr. Brooks, you're being taken no, to the next no courtroom. Don't try to address me Thank like you. that, like we cool. You don't have no integrity. How can you even call yourself a judge? Making type of agreements, being biased, judicial misconduct, trying to steal somebody's Oh. Uh. I mean, does this guy truly think he didn't kill those people in that accident? So questions undoubtedly arise. How dangerous are sovereign citizens? Does having this mindset and belief system enable individuals to commit crimes? Or do some who commit crimes simply find the sovereign citizen belief system and decide to subscribe to it because they feel like it gives them justification? Yeah. I, is it naive of me to think that they're not doing that with the intent to, like, harm people? It's just to, like... Like, there's certain people that don't want to have expectations of, of themselves. They don't like that. They don't believe that someone else should have expectations of them, right? And this is a way to, like, to do that. But I would hope <laughs> um, that people aren't doing it intentionally. That, As like, we mentioned the earlier, the FBI people, you know considers I mean? sovereign citizens extremists on the level of domestic terrorism. And even if sovereign citizens are not necessarily going out in droves and committing mass murders, there are many accounts of typical crimes outside of traffic violations that sovereign citizens will commit. For what? example, in Sacramento, California, two sovereign citizens were convicted of running a fraudulent insurance scheme, operating a company completely outside of state insurance regulatory authorities. The men sold lifetime memberships and offered to pay any accident claims against members. The company collected millions of dollars, but only paid small auto insurance claims and ignored large ones. In Kansas City, Missouri... Well, that just sounds... Yeah, that just sounds like... It has nothing to do with being a sovereign citizen. Like, it's more not causation, but, like, correlation. Missouri, three sovereign citizens were convicted in a phony diplomatic credential scandal. They charged customers between $450 and $2,000 for a diplomatic ID. identification card that bestowed sovereign status, supposedly to enjoy diplomatic <laughs> immunity from paying taxes and from stops <laughs> and arrests by law enforcement. See, that's, that's just almost funny. That's like, that'd be like me or, like, somebody has nothing to do with this, like taking advantage of sovereign citizens and be like hey i can get you a piece of paper all right i can get you like a piece of paper that will legally you know show that you're a sovereign citizen and you are not subject to these rules that's like scamming the scammers almost in las vegas nevada four men affiliated with the sovereign citizen movement were arrested by the nevada joint terrorism task force on federal money laundering tax evasion and weapons charges the undercover investigation I mean, you don't have to be a sovereign that citizen two of the suspects try allegedly that stuff. laundered more than a million dollars and collected fees for their services so how dangerous are sovereign citizens that is difficult to answer on one hand to have a group of people who collectively believe that laws do not apply to them, that their government does not have the right to dictate standards and procedures from the people living within its borders, and who feel like any action they can take can simply be justified by saying, it's within my rights, is inherently dangerous. My rights! An individual like that could potentially justify committing any number of crimes ranging from small and harmless to potentially deadly. But it but it will never work. Are there instances, let me know you guys, um, of people using the sovereign ci sovereign citizen arguments in court, and and one, is that is that ever happened? Let me know. On the other hand, it's possible that the ideology of the sovereign citizen doesn't create criminals; it simply draws them, due to how easy it is to mentally check out and fool yourself into thinking you aren't doing anything wrong. Maybe a murderer would have been a murderer whether he was a sovereign citizen or not. That's, that's what or I think maybe so far. The sovereign citizen ideology simply draws the most narcissistic, delusional, and whiny. The individuals who can't stand to be told what to do, but at the same time can't stand to take any accountability for their actions. This, this, is, this sounds a lot. My experience, I deal with a lot of people, <laughs> you know, and I know I deal with mostly with kids, but there's definitely sometimes, you know, things like that where people 
can accept it, like that their expectations, right? And expectations don't agree with it. And, you know, um, but yeah, narcissism is, is a real thing. Um, and unfortunately that narcissism gives people with pride and you'll find with, unfortunately, a lot of people that get in trouble with the law that what can get them there is that pride um, with that. So that's unfortunate. The individuals whom no one can stand to deal with, but who simply will not go away. It, Thank you okay. so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, tell the like button that they're violating your rights and ask the subscribe button to show you <laughs> exactly where in the Constitution it says you have to hit it in order to be notified of my new content. Nice. Also, ding the notification bell so you know the second I put out a new video. If you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon. I only have one tier, and for a buck you can get early access to my videos, bonus updates and episodes, well, and other like extras him. I put up. I truly clubs. appreciate the support, and that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. All right, I got some final thoughts, and I'm also going to want some feedback from you all. All right, so with my first, like, I guess, analysis early on here of sovereign citizens, you know, he was talking about at the end, like, what type of people are becoming sovereign citizens, people that are likely to be criminals or just people that are narcissistic, um, don't like to have expectations and rules upon them, you know, that kind of thing. It does, it, it does seem like that these guys, uh, it seems like something coming to my mind that would probably, that might um, explain all of them is they all have probably uh, probably like an anti-police but maybe anti-government um type of uh of like um uh, belief system and maybe their political beliefs social beliefs kind of coincide with that um that they yeah don't don't like that i don't know if that's the case again i'm just scratching the surface of this um but it has been interesting to see again i'm hoping to see more like historical precedent i want to see and i was hoping to get this and i didn't really get this from this and if you have some more suggestions if you want to see me uh if you want to see me comment more more on i want to see the historical context for what people are using as justification to why laws and all this stuff that's happening doesn't apply to them that's that's what I want to do. And I think it obviously be more relevant to this channel. So much of this was legal jargon and I'm no, I'm not a legal expert, but the, the history of that, but it nevertheless has, has kind of scratched an inch, an itch to uh, want me to get more, you know, into this just from, from that perspective. Um, just cause it's kind of entertaining. It's uh, I, I'm very much inter interested in the psychology of stuff like this. Um, it's kind of a, you know, maybe not doesn't apply to being a history teacher, all of those things, but um, it's just fascinating on my own personal level. So anyway, all right. Thank you so much. If you have been watching this, this was part two. If you've been following along with me. Thank you very much um, to, for, uh, for doing that. Again, the original video is down below. If you like what I'm doing here, I'd love to see you hit the thumbs up and tell me that you like this. This lets me know which kind of content to try to make. And hopefully you can earn your sub, uh, can earn your sub as well. All right. With that, we're going to see you next time. Bye.